You are listening to an interview with a featured Pride of Dakota member. Hi, this is Sarah Kels, and today I'm sitting down with Tony Shears with Cut and Scribe, and Scott Wilde's going to sit on this one, too. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So, Tony, tell us about your company. Well, Cut and Scribe is about a year old now. We started in February of last year. Uh, my wife and I started this company. Uh, it was something we've always wanted to do together. We wanted to work together, wanted to be in a business together. Um, and so we decided to go with something that would take good use of her skills. She's got a, a very, she's very talented in graphics and things like that. And take use of my skills, which is selling and talking to people and meeting people. And so hopefully the, the two skills work together. Uh, we started the business out of our home, and our original intention was to travel from show to show to show and, and, and try to do some uh, engraving at the shows. We kind of found out that that doesn't work so well because what we do is so personalized that, that when people see what we do, they love it, but they don't bring photographs and things like that to the show that they would like to have um, engraved. So we've kind of changed our business plan a little bit. and our, In fact, our business plan probably doesn't look anything like what we're doing. Um, and we've, we've done a lot of different things trying to find that one niche where we really fit and we fit well. And I think we just in the last few months have kind of found it. Um, we've been doing a lot of things with leather. Uh, we do engraving. Um, one of the things I was t- I was talking about earlier, we uh, take pictures that the soil conservation has taken and engrave them in leather and then mount them on cedar or some kind of a board and then engrave the, the name of the farm on there. So that's like the farm of the year. They they always do a farm of the year yep. or whatever. And then they you take that in and put that on a big sheet of leather and then just frame that? The ones we've done haven't been real big. Yeah. But they've been a small enough that we can we can mount them on a smaller piece of wood, sure. and it really turns out nice because leather we found out when it comes to engraving is very consistent. I mean, you you can engrave leather over and over and over, and you're going to get the same basic finished product every time. Uh, we kind of one of the things that happened is we work with a guy over in Mandan who makes shaps. His name is Joe Wamsley, and he makes shaps for professional bull riders and things like that. And he came to us and said. Can you put this picture on a yoke? And that's one of the uh, one of the waste pieces for our shop. And I said, sure. And he actually gave us a picture of a, of a saddle bronc rider, and and Pam engraved it on the yoke. And then he tooled around it, and the two of them looked just fantastic oh, together. Cool. Absolutely. And he sent the the shops ended up in New Zealand. Oh, very so, cool. So we're worldwide now. No doubt. <laughs> but, Global. And and so that's kind of where we got started, and that's kind of what the th- what got us into the using leather as our substance to to, to engrave on. We still do a lot of other things, but we leather is one of the things we really enjoy. So, you said you kind of, you ended up with with leather. Can you tell us some of the other things you've tried to engrave on? We did uh, over Christmas time, and Christmas was December was a real good month for us. Um, we did uh, for one of, for a couple of people in town. We did some uh, granite plaques. Oh, cool. um, we did a lot of photographs, family photographs for one gal, um, and then for another guy, we in Dickinson we did some uh, marble plaques where he had a picture of his of his baby and a poem, and then on the back, yeah. Um, certificate of copyright and so we did those for him uh we do gun stocks we put pictures of pheasants or elk or whatever on the gun stock so it, and it really turns out nice it, it's very beautiful product when it gets done pam came up with a scrolling design that we put on there and it really looks nice it turns out really good well, so, I, okay. I think it's the detail that, that is uh, that i'm impressed with you know when i look at you just brought in some sample belts that you just made or some sample leather straps and that i assume it all could be made into either belts or dog collars or and and the how intricate the design is is incredible. And some of them had the customized names. One of them said buggies and blues, and it had some actual um, old fashioned cars and some muscle had a whole cars scene on it. Yeah, it had a whole scene exactly. And then you had one that had horse riders and, and rodeo. And so I mean that's that's what I think is the intriguing part here. And you know that when you see you know uh, people at rodeos and, and people you know cowboys and stuff, they love intricate designs. They and so I really think you do have a niche, but. Uh, at the Idea Center, in fact, I just handed it to Sarah. Uh, he did, uh, uh, Tony and Pam did a bunch of rocks that were inscribed with the Idea Center logo on one side, and then you flip it over, and there's a quote on the back, a little tiny quote, and every single rock was different. Um, and they're, they're gorgeous. They give them out to the stakeholders. They give them in kind of a little burlap sack, you know, as Great sort idea. of a pet rock kind of thing. But it's it's for people. It's a paperweight. It's something to put on the desk just to let people know that they're kind of the bedrock or the foundation of the idea center. Um, but the, what a creative product. Could you talk a little bit about, you know, like, so after seeing that, I, I think you could probably engrave on almost anything, right? Well, we actually, I mean, we've, we've tried just about everything you can imagine. In fact, we had a lady come to us, and, and she works at the Speedway in Mandan uh, during the summertime. And she said, can you make 
patterns to put checkered flag on my fingernails. And Pam thought, well, yeah, it didn't seem like it'd be that difficult. So we actually made a template that when she goes and has her finger, finger, fingernails done, um, I think he puts on the white first, and then he puts this little template over and goes on, does the top, does black. <laughs> and it looks like a checkered flag. It's like a stencil or something? Yeah, yeah it looks crazy. great. Oh, that's um, cool. <laughs> we've tried rocks. Our original goal was to was to try to use things that we get at the local lumberyards or in, in town. Sure. But we found out with granite and with things like that that there's – it's you. You buy laser engraved materials for a reason, and it's because of consistency. Yeah. Um, when you buy granite at, at Lowe's or at Menards or wherever, and you go home and try to engrave it, there's chips in there and there's things. And it's not as it's it's made for floors, not for engraving. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we we couldn't use that, but we doesn't stop us from trying different things. Um, uh, we with the rocks we did. That was an idea. We brought that in and showed it to Julie, and she loved it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's a great idea. And what? it was just something my wife picked up out of the out of the rock bed around the house. She thought, I'm going to see if I can do this. And so we went and uh, we ordered. At first, we ordered some rocks from California, but they came there all the same color. They were hard to, hard to engrave. And the mailman thought we were nuts dropping off you know, 40 pounds of rocks at our house. And, um, but Was he like, did you look outside? There's rocks out there. Yeah, well, he said, what is in this box? And I said, rocks. And he, okay. Uh-huh. But we, uh, we ended up getting the rocks and locally, and it's just river rock. Yeah. And we tried to get different sizes. And because of what we do with the laser, you have to you only have so much tolerance when it comes to going around circles and edges and stuff. Yeah. So we had to try to find flat rocks, and um, if we could find a rock that was was close to flat but was kind of round, we had to figure out how to put it in there so it would stay. And uh, it coming up with templates to actually hold things. Yeah. Um, and we also did uh, we've done some commercial stuff. Uh, we work we work with uh, Shane Wagner. He owns a company called Proven Wicked. Mm-hmm. And he makes some specialty parts for cars. We've actually put his logo on those on those parts for him. Um, we were also, also working with Innovative Solutions to do some th- stuff with Evan Anderson. Sure. Uh, we tried to get into the commercial a little bit, but and we can do a lot of prototype stuff. You know, if somebody comes and says, "I just need to make two or three of these," or you know, but if they say we want a million, we can't do that. Right. As much as we'd love to, we sure. just can't. Sure. Uh, but we'll try. Basically. Uh, we'll try just about anything. Uh fellow in town who makes fishing rods, uh, hand custom makes them, brought the handles to us. And so we're going to engrave on the handles. For yeah, them. cool. It, it's perfect. I mean, in fact, I gave, I was, I saw you at a Capital Affair, I think it was, mm-hmm. in front of the Capitol and handed you a business card. And, and all of a sudden, like a week later in the mail, I get this envelope with four cutouts of, uh, it's plastic cutouts of my logo and they're like coasters. Mm-hmm. And and it was just really high quality, and yet it was like it seemed like plastic or metal or it it's was, a plastic. It was plastic, but it, it almost had a metallic look and feel to it. And uh, yeah, we use them as coasters here. And I mean, it's so it, it's <laughs> that's it's just amazing the the types of things that you can do. And and actually, the shape of the object was the cutout of our circle with the flame and everything. So it wasn't as though he had a square piece or a round piece and then put the image on it. He actually lasered out the the shape of our logo into this plastic piece so we did a we do a pheasant that we put on a gun stock and and we just did some for pheasants forever for their annual meeting and the detail is just unbelievable you you can see the feathers you can see the the ridges in the feathers i mean it's just it's phenomenal it's belie- it's it it's beautiful when you get done yeah um it's you know it's scary because you're you're taking a thousand dollar gun and you're putting it in a laser <laughs> machine and if you go well we mess this up we're in big trouble but uh, we're very cautious about it. We Pam will run four or five test samples before she ever gets to the point where she's ready to put it on there. So uh, we were at, when we were at the gun show here a while ago, I had a guy ask me, you know, I think a lot of people think I bring you a picture, you put it in your machine, you engrave it. It's not that simple. Yeah, it, it's a time process that you know you have to put scan the picture and then take it into Corral Draw and and fine tune it and then take it into another program and fine tune it. And then take it back into Corral Draw and take it into the into the laser. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's a process. Um, we don't charge a setup fee at this point because we just feel it's something we'll do as part of it, part of the service. Yeah. But it it gets to be sometimes you know we we'll sell a granite plaque for fifty five dollars and we've probably got three hours into it. Sure. Well, wow. and now you've found your niche with this leather product. I mean, so you're, you've got these belts. You've got a, a woman in Wyoming that wants to order, you know, a yeah. ton. Um, and, you know, you talk about Amy Hollett. You know, you, you are painting the leather with, you know, different colors and gold and silver and red and then then putting a like a metal, yeah. almost a metallic brush finish on it. It was really unique. And so you're you're handcrafting something for her in different, like, 
different colors every six inches. And so, yep. so you can really kind of whatever people are interested in. And that's one of the things with the, with the leather belts that we're doing. You know, we try to do them all so they're very consistent, but we do we do everyone by hand. Yeah. So this isn't running through an assembly line. So you're going to get a little bit of difference in every, no two belts are ever going to be exactly the same, but that's all right. Yeah. Uh, because the, the, the picture of the, of the bull rider or the picture of the barrel racer may be different. Or maybe it's going to be the same, but the color may be just a little bit different. The shades might be not be the same as they were in the other one. But we post them on our Facebook page, and we post them on our website, so people can go to our website and, and um, cut and, www.cutandscribe.com, and they can get a good idea of all the things we've done. Yeah, yeah and great Facebook page too. You guys yeah. are posting pictures of new products all the time, so that's yep. really fun to to see too. And you really ramped up the Facebook presence now, and and you say you're getting some success from that. Yeah. Let's talk about that. The other night we had uh, we posted a belt. I think it was last Thursday we posted a belt, and within minutes. And and one of the things that's helped us is that the fellow we work with on the shafts, Joe Wamsley, he's got a Facebook page too, and he's got about five thousand people that follow him. And a lot of them are, are cowboys, or rodeo people. Mm-hmm. And we'll put something up on our page and share it with him. And within minutes, uh, and yesterday he put a belt up, and it wasn't three minutes later he already had three or four hits. Wow! I love that belt. I want one. How do I get it? You know, it, it's just. So posting it, and, and something that Scott taught us, and taught Pam and taught me the last time I was in one of Scott's seminars, you got to talk to the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so we try to be very interactive. When, when they respond to us, we try to respond back to them, make sure that we say thank you for, uh, for the compliment, here's how you can get it, and, and just try to, you know, they're called friends for a reason. And so we try to treat them like friends and um, try to make sure that we're staying in touch with them. And, and when we post, I've noticed that, We've in the last probably four or five days we've had fifteen to twenty friend requests. Up until that time we hadn't you know, we get one here, one there. Yep. But we're starting to get more friend requests. We're also starting to get more likes, even though they're not requesting me a friend. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. liking the photographs, they're liking the pictures and stuff. So it's kind of fun to watch. Nothing does my heart more proud than to see someone doing, you know, the actually getting into it and and, and seeing some success and stuff. And so. you guys are on Twitter too, correct? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now the Twitter part I'm <laughs> Hey, it's a I'm, process. I'm, I'm not real process. good at it, but I, I'm trying to figure out, you know, just and it's, Scott's going to have to spend some time with us one of these days to, to teach us how to use a Twitter properly. Yeah. Because one of the things I read about Twitter is you don't want to have meaningless conversation on there. You want people to understand or or to send them someplace or to give them some sort of a of a reason why you're tweeting, not just to say hi. I'm I'm walking on the street now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, in your case, you, you know, you're going to listen. You're going to listen for people that are looking <clears> for <throat> products, looking for special customized products. So you, I use it more to listen than anything. Yeah. Then the other thing is that you're going to link to specific, you know, products that you have on your site. You're going to you're going to put out a special benefit statement, and then you're going to tell them here's where you can go. Out. You know, right. mm-hmm. Twitter's all about links, really. It's just because you only have 140 characters, you really can't get into too much depth about anything. So. Uh, but you know, if you want to follow uh, Tony and Pam, it's Cut and Scribe, C U T N S C R I B E. So at Cut and Scribe on Twitter, um, I'm following you, and uh, yeah, it's worth checking out because I mean, it just takes it takes time. But you know, it's like one thing at a time. You get the Facebook going, then you start to get into the Twitter conversation, and uh, it'll be old hat after that. And if you go into the Facebook page and you look, you might see just a few things that we've done. But if you go into our photos and stuff, I mean, everything we've done is in our Facebook page, and yeah. so it's it's all there, just like our website. Uh, the Facebook, the nice thing about it, if you do it, put it up, post it, it's there right now. Whereas the, the cut and scribe, the web page, it's it's there, but it's a, a longer process. Mm-hmm. It takes a little while to get everything mm-hmm. done. Um, Pam has done a really good job. She's uh, she's created our website. Um, mm-hmm. She's done a very good job of learning how to do it. She didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Um, so my wife is very instrumental in this business because she knows the technical part of it and she can learn that stuff. Whereas I'm, I struggle with that a little bit, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm more the face to face type person. You only need one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need a social butterfly in the group too. So, yeah. well, and I can go to a show and I can talk to five, 500 people without blinking an eye. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when it comes to going to the shows, that's where she's a little bit uncomfortable because she doesn't know what to say. And so that's why the two of us work well together. We yeah, complement each other. Very so. good team. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And the next thing that the next suggestion we talked about is uh, getting a video of you making yeah. one of the products. And so people can see it come to life right in front of their eyes. And I think that'll change it because when I first had Pam in the class, I think 
uh, a year ago, yeah. you know, yeah. almost a year ago, you know, she kept talking about cut and scribe and cut and scribe. And I really didn't understand. I was thinking more manufacturing. You know, when I think kind of cut and scribe, I almost think of like right. you're cutting templates for car parts or, you know, I did not think engraving, you know, mm-hmm. immediately. And then all of a sudden she started to show examples and light bulb went off and it was like, wow. I mean, it is an impressive product. And we did. We we found that out with a lot of people that have come to our. And we work out of our house, so it's a little bit difficult to get people to come there. I don't know if they feel uncomfortable about it, or you know, they don't want to intrude on our house. But it's the choice we made. We mm-hmm. we work out of our home, and, and we welcome people to call us and, and make it set up a time to come over anytime. But when they come and see the process and see the engraver and, and just take a look at some of the things we do, all of this, you can see the mind just going. Yep. And and we work with a real estate agent in town, who. When people buy a home from her, she gives uh, the gift is to come to Cut and Scribe and have something done. Oh, great Wonderful. idea. Wow. And so when the last couple that we had come, they had they came with a preconceived notion, this is what it was going to be. But when they left, they were just, they were everywhere. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, they're thinking of all the different things that, that they can do and all the different things that they can, they can have us engrave. And um, so it's just one of those things that once you see it and, and you see what it can do and you see the possibilities. Yep. It just changes your whole your whole idea of what you thought it, thought it was. That's exactly the camp that I'm in because once I saw the rocks, once I saw the coasters that you sent, I, I've talked about you guys more in the last six months. Just you know, people t- coming up and I'm like, oh, you need to talk to you know, you need to talk to Cut and Scribe because they can do that or they can do. I mean, I, just now that I know and the possibilities are there, mm-hmm. you see the opportunities come out. I think we have a lot of people who who come to us and, and when they leave, they're they're so overwhelmed by the possibilities and yeah. they're, and they're so. I don't know if they're afraid to come back or if they're, if they're still <laughs> thinking about what they want to do and they can't come to a conclusion. But you know, we're willing to try just about anything. Yeah. So, what is the craziest thing you guys have have tried? The craziest thing we've tried is the fingernails. I mean, I mean, the template for that was probably the, the craziest thing. When we started working on these leather belts and stuff, um, you know, it's the biggest thing that you have to do is how do you come up with a design? Yeah. And where do you get? You have to have a good picture. If you're going to put a picture of a bull rider on there. You have to know what whoever looks at that belt has to know what's a bull rider. Thinking, mm-hmm. well, I think that's somebody in a rodeo. Yeah. Um, and and believe it or not, cowboys and rodeo people, they can look at a saddle bronc and a bareback, and they can tell the difference between the two. I can't. Yeah. But I'm learning now. But <laughs> you have to. I guess we're we're learning. You have to know your audience and figure out what they can what they want. And sometimes that's difficult, um, but the, probably the craziest thing we've worked on is is the fingernails, and that was. So you guys will pretty much do anything if somebody has an idea and they yeah. come to you and say, "Hey, I." We will try something. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's, 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 I, uh, I think you're onto something with the belts, though, and, and the leather pieces. <laughs> I, I really think there's something special there. And the belts, we're, right now, we're 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 working on uh, mostly rodeo events because that seems where we where we started, and it's where we're getting a lot of excitement and a lot of um, followers on our Facebook page. Yeah. But we want to do one for uh, bikers, mm, for the yeah, motorcycles. That, yeah, uh, we want to do one. We're looking at you know if there's a special event coming up. That's why we did the buggies and blues one. Oh yeah. Um, if, if there was a special event, we would make what our thought was is to do a limited edition belt. Oh yeah. So that you right only on. you know we only make maybe a hundred of them. And so that's a great idea. They're a limited edition, and, and this is all that's going to be. Um, we're looking at trying to do something for the Minokan bike rally. Uh, if we want to talk, get, I, want, I need to get together with the right people and talk about what we want to do and, and see if we can do something there. Uh, you know, I think you knew this, uh, Scott, that, uh, and I don't know if you knew this here or not, but our original idea was to go to Sturgis for three weeks and go to the Wee Fest for three weeks. Yeah. Um, it might be a tough lifestyle. Well, I, and I don't know. <laughs> bike, I'm not sure bikers are into leather, so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's been a it, – that, that idea was more probably mine than it was my wife's because she didn't know if she wanted to spend three weeks in Sturgis and yeah. three weeks in Devil's You Park. would do well. I mean, seriously, if you uh, – especially when you start, you know, taking like saddlebags off of bikes and stuff. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, you look at the money that people spend on yeah, customizing absolutely. their bikes, on paint jobs, on – you know, look at American Choppers now. And the money that people spend detailing the, the mm-hmm. most minute things on their bikes but because it's subtle and because they know it's there and i mean seriously it would it would just go over so well and for if someone could get a saddlebag customized or thinking about what you the question you asked about this, the most unique thing we did we did a uh, uh graphic for a uh, car club in town and the guy who was in the car club brought this to us and said i don't know what you can do and it really turned out it's a it's a on acrylic and it actually is a 3d where we did we did the back 
And then we did the uh, the name of the car club in front, and we did their their logo and stuff on there, and it turned out just gorgeous. I mean, sure. really, and there's a picture of that on our Facebook page too. It's blue acrylic. You know, it when you start trying to figure out how am I going to make this work, how am I going to make this work, it's a process. Yeah. And and the nice thing about the lasers when we work with acrylic, and we want to put holes in certain places, the laser does all that. So we don't take it over to a drill press. We don't do any of that stuff. We just make the logo, put the holes where we want it to. And everything fits together. Wow! And it really turned out it was it was actually a Christmas gift that we made for somebody to give out. Um, it was like a blind Christmas gift to give out on parties. Yeah. And we got done with it. He didn't want to give it away. Oh, he wanted, he wanted to, to keep it. The white <laughs> elephant that yeah. no one wanted yeah. to give away. That's so that, that's perfect. That's great. Yeah. And he ended up getting it back, which oh, was cool. which kind of worked out because the guy he gave it to was from Missouri yeah. and it said North Dakota on it. And so he said, "Well, you can have it back." So he was pretty happy with that's that. That's awesome. You know the way you sell it to bikers? You call it tattoos for their leather. <laughs> There tattoos for your leather that's yeah. a good idea leather tattoos there yeah. you go you know we'll, we'll tattoo your saddlebag or whatever so i mean that, that's the way you sell it <laughs> we just have the... to make sure that we we keep that uh, we refuse to do certain things oh yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah keep it clean yeah so <laughs> if if someone clean okay, tattoos well, let's go through how people can get a hold of you now i mean uh if they're interested in in a having you do some concepts for them or or getting a hold of your products let's let's run through let's talk about websites and phone numbers okay. email um, our website is at www.cutandscribe.com. Okay. And, and as you said before, it's cut and then just the letter N, scribe. Yep. Um, we've also, our Facebook page is at cutandscribe.com. Um, Facebook.com slash cutandscribe. Okay. Yep. See, I don't know I don't know the right terminology. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm here. I'm your safety net. <laughs> and and there also is a, a link. Pam did put a link to Facebook on, right. our, on our website. So it'll take you right there. Yeah. Uh, telephone number is 701-425-1715. Um, I t- you can text me or call me either one. You ask for Tony. Ask for Tony. He's yeah. a salesman. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. I do the sales. So okay. Um, but basically, um, text me. I'll answer your text as soon as I can. Uh, if you call, I'll I'll answer that. Uh, we we're just looking for a place. You know, we're looking for people that want something unique. Yep. Um, if you want a million or something, we're probably not the right company to come to. But if you want, but you can do the unique. concept for those million. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. And we've done that with innovative solutions. You know, we've worked with Evan to do a few things that, yeah. that are concepts, and um, hopefully we're we're going to do more of that too. Right on. Well, it's a great product. Yeah, yeah. it's been awesome having you on today. Very interesting stuff, yeah. Tony. We'd like to find if, if somebody knows of a small warehouse that's pretty cheap for rent. We'd like to find a place that we can get out of the neighborhood because when it sure. comes time for for spring and summer and we're burning leather. Uh, Not going to be um, the most popular. Yeah, neighbor. I don't think the neighbors are going <laughs> to like us too much. So, <laughs> might be able to clear out your own little area, you know, and just say, hey, "Everybody you might." If move. you don't like the neighbors, just open the windows. <laughs> if you like branding, it's a good place to be. But, <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks for being with us. Right, awesome. Thanks for thanks, having thanks, me. Tony. Thank you. To learn more about this featured Pride of Dakota member, visit our website, prideofdakota.com. To become a featured Pride of Dakota member, send an email to prideofdakota at gmail.com. To listen to the full podcast of North Dakota Now, click on the podcast link on our website, prideofdakota.com. Thanks for listening.